g'day. As you can see, I'm ready to go sailing. I'm about to test out a few things, which um, I hope will improve the old Hobie. Uh, I, ha I had a rant about a week ago about how when these boats go over, they have a tendency to go away from you, particularly if you're on the wrong side of the boat. Uh, and also, uh, once you've capsized your boat, getting back on your boat is um, often hard because they're so high out of the water. Well, I'm never really one to uh, pose problems without coming up with solutions. So in this video, I want to talk to you about um, a, a method of stopping your boat from floating away. I want to talk to you about your riding rope. And I also want to talk to you about a ladder to get back onto your boat. But um, before I go out sailing and uh, show you what I've done, um, I want to show you what I've been working on over the last uh, few days to uh, make this boat safer and to get ready for my day out on the water in a few minutes. Okay, so we'll catch you after the sailing. Last year when sailing the boat, I capsized and ended up on the wrong side of the boat. That's the uh, boat on the opposite side of the sail. Um, where you've got nothing to hang on to and I had to watch as my boat was caught by the wind and uh, started to drift across the, the ocean um, uh, I don't really know where it would have ended up um, I was there out in the sea and it was only my mate who I was sailing with who came to rescue me if he hadn't rescued me and uh, subsequently my boat and goodness knows where my boat would have ended up so I had to come up with a solution and, yes, you just heard it, I've come up with an anchor. And what happens is that the, the boat goes over, the anchor will grab, the, the anchor will stop your boat from uh, moving away. I'll, I'll also show you in the video some other uses um, for the anchor. Now you may think in the event of a capsize that this could fall into your main or your jib if you've got one. But I found that when the boat goes over, it um, just goes straight in the water and stays clear off your sails. Don't you just love those magpies? Now, a little bit about the anchor setup. You want to get an anchor similar to this. You don't want to get one with uh, prongs all over it so that you end up getting spiked in the head. This actually sits nicely in this tray. Now, there is about six meters of rope in here and I'll just show you what's attached to the end of this rope. Now, what I've got attached to the end of this rope is probably a meter of double bungee uh, which acts like a shock absorber um, if your boat's at anchor and pulls against the anchor it's not going to pull your anchor out of the ground and then at the end of the bungee uh, just have something like this I just happen to have this uh, in the shed but uh, just a clip and then I usually just put my clip around the uh, hiking strap like that I also need to say that the anchor needs to be sitting on top of your rope, not under your rope. So in the event of a capsize, the anchor goes over first and um, then the rope follows it. Now the other thing is I've never pitch poled this boat. In the event of a pitch pole, if you had a jib, the anchor may become entangled in the jib. So I'm not quite sure how it would work in a pitch pole. Um, but, uh, it definitely works if you have a, uh, a capsize. Now initially when I thought of the anchor idea, I thought about mounting it on the, um, on the spreader bar on the front of the boat, but personally I didn't like the look of it, so I mounted it here. Um, if you mounted it on your spreader bar, you're almost certain to get your anchor into the water and to not foul your jib or your main at all. Uh, and it would also um, um, come out of its tray in the event of a of a pitch pole. So that's your choice. You might like to mount it on your front spreader bar. Right now, here's a look at the box that the anchor sits in. That's a basic, simple box you can get from a hardware store. It's got a cutout here, cutout on the other side, then a cutout on the back um, to hold hold the rest of the anchor. Held in place with. Um, same sort of bungee cord that I've used, well, well you can use any sort of bungee cord, but this is just the cord I had left over from the uh, anchor rope. Just goes through the box and then under 
the uh, strap on your trampoline. Your rope goes in the box, so, and your anchor is always going to go in the box <coughs> this way, so that it sits in its cradle, like that, and like that, so it's sitting there ready to be flung out the box. Now all my capsizers were at relatively low speed, at a higher speed the anchor is going to have forward momentum and it's going to fly out of the box in this direction, forwards towards the front of your boat. Now that's why it's important to have it facing this way because if it's facing the other way, this end will come out first and it may foul your rope. Now this way it won't foul your rope. Now obviously if you're sailing in deeper water you're going to have to put more rope in there. So, well, just get a bigger box. But as you can see it just sits there nicely on the front of the boat. Now just one other thing about the anchor. Um, I've purposely chosen red rope because um, um, for instances where you use this where you've draped it across the beach um, and you'll see that in the video later on. Um, you want people to be able to see it. If you use white rope, people won't see it and they might trip over it. If you use red, you can easily see it. Now, if you don't want to drag your boat up on the beach every time you're coming into the beach, um, and you want to keep it away from incoming swells if you're sailing in the ocean, if, you ha if you've got an anchor, you can just drop your anchor um, to its full length and stretch the bungee and just leave it at the water's edge. On light wind days I will often unclip the main, tie up the jib and just drop the anchor and let the boat drift. Now this saves me having to lift the boat at all. It's also useful at the end of the day to come in and just take out your anchor and leave your boat at the beach while you go and get your car and your trailer without fear of your boat drifting off um, into the sea. Having an anchor also means that on really light wind days you can just drop your anchor over the side and um, as I often do if the wind has dropped and have a bit of a rest on your boat and wait for the wind to pick up then uh, pull it back onto the boat. It's uh, pretty easy getting it back on when your bungee cord attached to the end uh, back in its box and off you go. Now if you've ever capsized your boat, you've probably found that if you're of a uh, small build that the writing rope is about in the right place. But if you're uh, larger and, and weigh a bit more, you probably found that the writing rope is a bit too far forward. I always find that uh, having my feet either side of that front beam and trying to get the boat up, I feel most unbalanced as the uh, front of the boat tries to sink. Well I'm going to show you a different way to um, mount your rope and that's under your boat. Now as I'm going to show you under the boat I'll show you an easy way to turn your boat over using the power of the wind. If for any reason you have to turn your boat over, i.e. the halyard has got stuck at the top of the mast or your sail is jammed, you can use the power of the wind to turn your boat over. Now, firstly turn your boat into the wind and pull down hard on your blocks and then gradually turn your boat away from the wind until the hull just starts to lift up. Um, then you can go to your side stay, to grab that and just gently roll your boat over. As it moves up just uh, reach under and uh, grab the riding rope and gently lower it onto its side. Now while my boat's on its side, note where the riding rope is, it's actually under the boat. It's held under the boat and it's attached to the rear beam via a bungee rope with a quick release clip. Um, this makes it readily available in the event of a capsize. Now I weigh 95 kilograms and if I stand with my legs either side of the front beam I feel that too much of my weight is forward. In the video clip the first part is for smaller sailors who may need to use a longer length of rope for leverage. Obviously if your boat is capsized in the water you're going to be leaning out a lot further than I am here, uh, but this is just to give you an idea of where to stand when writing your boat. 
The second part is for sailors like myself who need to stand further back on the boat away from the front beam and need less length of the riding rope. Now on the back of your boat you'll have a fitting like this and it's through this that uh, you put the first clip. Now I should point out that I have this fitting here because I have a traveller. If you haven't got a traveller this fitting will be on the top of your back bar about here. So all you need to do is to get a good quality a bit of rope thread it through that fitting on the top of your bar so that it comes down to about here and then just use the clip as I've done for the rest of the setup. So that's if you haven't got a traveller. Now here's the clip we've just seen at the back of your boat. It's on this clip that you're going to attach your writing rope. Now I'll show you how this is made up. This is just um, at the end of your writing rope is here and we've got three lengths of a bungee cord going up to another clip. In between this clip and the end of your writing rope you've got a, a piece of rope which allows your bungee cord to stretch to a certain length and not any further. Now the main reason for the bungee cord is to keep your writing rope tight under your boat. This other cord um, lets you pull on your writing rope and allows you to get a bit of leverage to get your boat upright. Now obviously you're going to have to adjust the length of this bungee and this rope to accommodate your weight. Um, if you don't weigh much <coughs> you're obviously going to have to unclip the whole thing and use the whole riding rope. So, but if you're like me and you weigh a bit more um, you're not going to lead all the riding rope um, you'll be able to move about a metre back from the front bar and pull and be able to get your boat up much easier. So that's just the setup of uh, what's at the back of the riding rope and attached to the back of your boat. I'll show you now how it looks uh, when it's attached at the back of your boat. Now you may wonder why I've got a couple of clips here and not just one clip coming down from the back. If you were to try and undo this clip, uh, it, it's actually quite hard this is uh, much easier than just to undo this to release your riding rope. So the setup when it's sitting at the back of your boat should look like this. Now this rope here will drag in the sea if you leave it like this and it sends up a bit of spray behind your boat which you may not like. So you can just wrap it around your bungee and um, then just tuck it in to keep it out of the way. So all I've done there is separate the bungee cords and uh, tuck that rope in between them. Now this is the size of the clip that you want to use. Something big so it's nice and easy to undo. If you've capsized your boat, or heaven forbid you've fallen off of it, you probably end up here trying to get back onto your boat and probably in about this position. Now these boats are fairly high up out of the water so to get back on the boat is actually pretty difficult. A mate of mine last year who was trying to get back on his boat was down here pulling himself up and he dislocated his shoulder. So to um, assist us with getting back on the boat We've got ladders now on the front of our boat and I'll show you how these operate. So when you're down in the water, just a matter of taking off the bungee cord, undoing the ladder and letting the ladder come out. Now these ladders hang straight down from the boat. Now trying to get up on that ladder is going to be fairly hard because when you step on the bottom rung the ladder is going to want to go under your boat. So to stop that from happening we've attached cords to the end of the ladder and uh, on the end of 
the right we've got a clip. Now that clip goes around the front of your spreader bar like that on each side. So one clip there and one clip here. I won't do that up. And once you've done that, that'll stop the ladder from going back under your boat. So if you haven't got a spreader bar, you can take this clip and just mount it in here. So no spreader bar, easy fix, just put it in there. And that'll make it much easier for you to uh, get back on your boat. Well, I finished all the modifications. Let's go down on the water and uh, see how they go. So let's get out in the water and turn it over and have some fun. The anchor's deployed. There she goes. The boat is now going away from me. Anchors, anchors fully deployed, the boat is moving off, the boat's now stopped moving. Boat's going away from me. Now, the boat is actually drifting away from me. As you can see, the anchor's deployed on the other side. Hopefully, it's going to grab in a minute because the boat's getting away from me. Has it deployed? Yep. The anchor's now caught. The boat is now stopped. Okay, so here I am in the water. The boat's down there. So now we'll get her up right. As you probably noticed when I go sailing, I've got gloves. Always wear gloves. Oh, my silver. Then get about two thirds of the way down. You'll also notice. Yeah, if I look down there, I've got boots. I never sail without boots. Okay, this is about where we should have our weight. Are we ready? Okay, into the wind. Now with that leverage, I can see the float. The mast float is moving out, even now. Okay, let's give her a go. Of course, what I've forgotten to do is undo the main. Crikey, it'll never come up. So let's Reach around here, get rid of this. The jib's fully on, but that shouldn't make a difference, I don't think. Without the main cleated on, she should pop up quite easy. It's funny how it makes all that difference. Okay, same wind, same stance. Up she comes, easy as pie. Now it's stopped. Now, I'm doing this for... Now I'm doing this for a person who weighs probably 90 kilograms or more. You saw where the rope... You saw where the riding rope was attached. If you were 
a person who didn't weigh much, you would stand pretty much here. But it is capsized. Being a bigger person, I'm going to stand back here. So I've got my feet at the edge of the boat. And when I pull down, I've got to watch when the trampoline comes up that doesn't hit me in the head. We'll lean back. Up she comes. Watch out for your head. It's not going anywhere. So it's a matter of getting up on the hull. Now, as I said in the video, you can adjust all this down here to suit yourself. I've adjusted this to suit my weight and my height. I know just how far I can go out to get the boat up. Even in fairly strong winds, I can get the boat up from this angle. But uh, where the anchor is now, the boat is pointing into the wind, which is uh, pretty good. The anchor is down there somewhere. You can see the, the bungee rope. The anchor is down there. So the boat is ended up into the wind, which is perfect. So we'll put our feet out on the edge, give a pull, up she comes. One of the benefits of uh, having your anchor out is that it allows you to um, get yourself back into gear. Now we've got our safety ladder deployed, tied up here and here. Now you may want to, when um, instead of climbing up the ladder, instead of climbing up the ladder and hanging onto the beam, you could put your feet, if you're dangling down in the water, put your feet in that ladder to give yourself some leverage. That'll get you to get that one leg up there, and then you get the other leg up there. Then it's just a matter of pushing yourself on. do now is get the anchor back. What we really should do now is let go of this jib. Let that go around there. Now. Now I chose this anchor retrieval because um, this was the most difficult. All the other times the anchor went out the front of the boat uh, which meant that the boat would ended up pointing into the wind. Now, this time the anchor had gone at the back of the side stay, which made it more difficult to retrieve. So I've showed you how I retrieved it. Our anchor's in a difficult position to get up. So what we're going to have to do is bring some of it in, kneel on it, undo here very quickly, Bring it around there. And hook it around the front of the boat very quickly. Now, it's just a matter of reeling her in. Now let's have a look at the anchor. Uh, this sort of anchor it's good in that it keeps this off the sand and allows it to dig in as it goes down. Hook back up our, our main. Main's always hardest to get. So we're going to loosen that out. Flip that in. We'll leave that nice and loose for the time being. Now we're going to grab our jib. 
If your jib is flogging madly in the breeze, don't reach under and try and grab it. You may get flicked in the eye. Uh, just uh, move your jib around the front of your mast um, and get some wind in it. Uh, that, that'll stop it from flogging and then you just um, clip it on. Grab our jib. Feed those. Might be easy to bring it around this side, Jeff. Bring it around here. Hook it back in. And then, I reckon, we'll soon be away. And now, we are back sailing. Saved by the anchor. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? I know what some of you are going to say, well, he didn't sail in the ocean, or he didn't sail in gnarly weather, he sailed in a lake. Yes, I sailed in a lake, and I sailed in a lake that wasn't too deep, just in case uh, any of the times that I capsized the boat and it actually got away from me, that it didn't get too far away from me. But I did sail on a day when there was uh, a reasonable amount of wind, so um, I think I put it to uh, a reasonable test. Now, um, it's not to say that every time you capsize your boat that the anchor is going to work. For me, I capsized the boat 12 times and each time um, that, the anchor, that the anchor grabbed and I was able to catch the boat. Now, there are going to be times when the anchor comes out um, when it may get caught on your side stay and it may get caught on, on your, your jib rope if you've got a jib. But, look, I've only capsized four times in ten years, um, and maybe I'm lucky. But uh, having the anchor there now just gives me uh, a bit of security, having uh, experienced uh, a situation where my boat did go away from me. I now know that um, if I'm in a position where uh, the boat tips and I end up on the wrong side of the boat, then I've got an anchor um, that hopefully, nine times out of ten, is going to work and stop the boat from going away from me. So I hope that's given you some ideas to make your boat uh, a bit safer and to make your Hobie sailing a bit safer. So um, if you do these things to your boat, I would suggest, strongly suggest, as I did over the last couple of days, to go to a quiet place, a quiet place where no one can see what you're doing, where no one can see that there's this idiot capsizing his boat a dozen times. What the hell is he doing? Um, a place where no one can see you, um, uh, work out that everything you've done with your boat is right and when you're totally happy with it, then you know that you can be safe out sailing on your boat and know exactly what it's going to do in certain circumstances. So, good sailing on your hubby wave and safe sailing on your hubby wave and uh, I'll catch you later. I've got a new video coming up soon so keep a look out for that. So, as I always say, have fun on your heavy way. Good sailing.